keynote address. She is an electrical engineer from Jadavpur University and MBA from IIM Calcutta. She started her career as a management trainee in Hindustan Lever Limited. Subsequently, she joined Titan, where she worked on several roles in marketing, both international and domestic. The next stint was at Talisma Corp as a director of product marketing. She moved on to become business head at Lee in Arvin Brands Limited. She is now the CEO of the Watches and Wearables Division of Titan Company Limited. Ladies and gentlemen, she will be talking to us on the topic of the new frontier of brand strategy and digital engagement. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome Suparna Mitra. A very warm welcome to you. Hi, lovely to be here. Lovely to have you, Suparna. I'm going to leave the screen to you for your conversation. Great. Thank you uh, for having me, uh, Exchange for Media. This is uh, a very interesting format and uh, you know i was wondering how relevant really and how apt it is that uh, we are having this completely virtual conference with all speakers and all participants uh, participating virtually and it is on digital marketing uh, so i'm uh, going to share some uh, thoughts and obviously everything is about post covid i don't think there is anything else in anybody else's mind right now uh, and I'm going to actually use this uh, opportunity to um, talk about some of the things that we've done in Titan, in the Watches division, uh, on brand strategy and using digital. And you know that is the whole thing about how are we going to look at brand strategy uh, through digital media. So just give me a minute. I will share my screen. Yeah. So um, let's start from around the middle of March. Um, what happened? We had a sudden lockdown and uh, practically all consumption except essentials came to a grinding halt. So we are in a category which is very discretionary, uh, totally non-essential in some ways. We are a category that is about uh, self-expression, about status, about emotion, about um, very higher order kind of needs and not about essentials at all. So in many ways, we are uh, uh, non-essential, but in many ways, we are also a category which makes people feel good. So the journey of what we did from mid-March to now the first phase was actually the lockdown phase. And the big brand challenge was how does a category like ours, totally discretionary, remain relevant and salient in an essentials only market? So what was the strategic intent? Uh, how to keep the brand alive in the consumer's minds during lockdown? And uh, the situation was such that while consumers were not actually consuming anything other than essentials, they had a lot of time and they were constantly on digital media. Consumers were working online, shopping online, entertaining themselves online. Uh, kids were learning online. So the entire human act gamut of human activity was online and, and especially in the early days there was a lot of consumption on covid related news so in a way the opportunity to engage digitally with the customer was very high but the question was what do you now tell them it would be totally daft to tell them then that go out and buy watches because all the stores were shut and there was no reason at all for anybody to buy watches. So what did we do? We felt that this was a great time to build relationships and to cherish and nurture relationships between the brand and the consumer that have been there for a while. And this was a good time to stop and really work on those, those relationships. So how did we do it? We did it by subtly placing the brand in emotional and gifting moments with audiences on social media. So what were the constraints? One was that 
there was, you know, we couldn't shoot anything and it, all of it had to be generated um, uh, by people who were, or everyone was locked down. So all of, all of the content had to be generated at home. Uh, and that was a constraint. But what was the opportunity? The opportunity was completely in the space of what do we mean as a brand to consumers? So we realized that we are a very big category for gifting, for birthdays and anniversaries. And what we saw was that people were locked down. They were not able to celebrate. They were not able to reach out to friends and family. And uh, we actually gave them a lot of avenues for expression on, on their birthdays. Uh, so these milestones, which people missed, uh, were a way of connecting back to the consumers and presenting the brand uh, in a in a subtle way, not in a way of in a in any kind of commercial sense, but just from an emotional sense. So, apart from birthdays and anniversaries, what else happened during that time? We had a few interesting occasions which lent themselves to this kind of communication. One was Mother's Day. And uh, what we did, and I'm going to just play this uh, for you, is uh, how do we create content uh, that, uh, that actually allows people to express themselves? So this is a huge time for self-expression. It was also a huge time for rediscovering how special our close our loved ones are. I think lockdown one re really paid attention to close family members and mothers are mothers always special so let me play this way did we do during the lockdown phase? Another interesting avenue for brand engagement was how do we imbue the brand values of positivity and optimism in the consumer's life in, their, in these peculiar circumstances by using brand assets. In the earlier uh, set, uh, panel discussion, there was a question on sonic branding and uh, we are blessed and Titan to have one of the most distinctive and uh, very, very signature uh, sonic brand uh, asset, and which is now called the Titan Tune, uh, which uh, we have in the lockdown period used it to, uh, like I said, subtly place brand values in the consumers, in the context of the consumers' lives. So, Another piece of communication which went out and got huge amount of uh, social engagement, social media engagement during this was uh, a Mother's Day piece which was using uh, the Titan tune. And a lot of uh, leading musicians from the country came together virtually for a concert. And uh, it was something that created magic and actually opened up many uh, new ways of connecting uh, with uh, with consumers so here we go <laughs> Thank you. 
another uh, uh, occasion where we used the Titan tune, and this was on April 14th, when the entire nation was waiting for the prime minister's address on uh, on um, um, because three weeks of lockdown were already over. And uh, uh, at 10 a.m., uh, the uh, prime minister actually extended the lockdown. And at two, by 2 p.m., we had put out uh, this piece of communication called Time Together. Let me play it, and then I will talk about what uh, kind of reaction and engagement we had got at that time. <laughs> So this one went viral. I, it got the highest organic views for the year, and it was just, uh, you know, people just spread it. You know, they just forwarded it to lots and lots of people. I think there was a certain topicality. The, the timing was everything. This post after two days wouldn't have possibly held as much meaning. The fact that at that point, you know, there was a whole nation saying, now what? Uh, three weeks have passed, and at that point, when this the news came that it had got extended, the reassurance from this uh, lovely piece of communication is this too shall pass, and give it time. It was something that really worked. Uh, we even got uh, picked up, uh, and um, it got talked about uh, by Shobhade in her Mumbai Mirror column, where she talked about uh, this commercial for Titan, which is an appropriate word in place of numerals on a watch, precisely 12 words that say it all. Just like these numbers, we too can be apart, yet be together. And the baseline, this too shall pass, give it time. And she calls it splendid. So this was another uh, usage of the tune. Very simple creative. I mean, you would think about it, there's nothing except the power of the idea. Uh, but um, it really struck a chord. And the last one, which is actually using our brand asset to uh, to deepen consumer engagement and affection for this uh, uh, beloved brand, uh, was um, centered around all the little activities that people were doing during the lo lockdown. I think, certainly for me, uh, the lockdown was a period of uh, self-discovery because it, it kind of forced us to stop and think and pause and reflect and uh, also reignite a lot of things that had kind of faded away in our lives. And we found a lot of people were doing a lot of new things together uh, for, after a while. And um, we felt that this was a time where we all loved a little, laughed a little, and lived a little, and uh, made it count, made, made every moment count. This is the time to learn something to forget something, to plant and grow, to return to an old love. This is the time to feed your mind and to feed the world, to stand still and to dance, to grow up, to become a child, to connect and disconnect. This is the time to do nothing and to do everything. What a lovely smile from that child. It really made uh, every moment count. So we now move on to the opening up phase. Um, this was um, late May, June, and um, though, though cases were going up every day and more lockdowns were being imposed and the whole thing had become, you know, certain cities, certain um, geographies uh, were having their own lockdowns. And uh, one of the big things was uh, the fear of personal safety to go out and shop. And uh, the question in the back of people's minds is, okay, if I don't have a choice, I will go out and buy essentials. But why would I go out right now and buy a discretionary um, category? So the big uh, barrier that we wanted to address at this point was the fear uh, and uh, 
uh, to assure people of our safety standards. And during the lockdown in the month of April itself, we had uh, worked out uh, very comprehensive um, safety procedures for our offices, for our st uh, factories, for our stores. And a uh, uh, lot of work had gone into training our store staff also to make sure that they understand what this is about. Uh, and uh, this was the time when we felt that this was a need of the hour. And all of the engagement that happened at this point was uh, addressing this. So uh, we did have a lot of new uh, ways of, of uh, communicating with customers and um, little innovations that actually helped them overcome the fear. Uh, so things like uh, video calling, video shopping, or browse online and then just pick up uh, the, the watch in store so you don't have to spend a lot of time in the store when you're browsing. And uh, now I will play a, a, a short video that had gone out to all our loyalty club. We have a very large um, customer loyalty program called Encircle. And we had uh, sent this out to millions of customers to assure them that we had done everything we could uh, to ensure the highest standards of safety. Hi, I'm Suparna Mitra, CEO of Titan's Watches and Wearables today. At Titan, the safety of our customers, employees, and the community is the priority. We have curated a contactless shopping experience from start to finish. We have sanitized products and have trained our employees to adhere to social distancing norms and to use masks and gloves. We have left no stone unturned to ensure your safety while you shop with your perfect accessory. Welcome back to your favorite store. Hi. So uh, that was on uh, assuring customers of uh, safety pr uh, protocol. And then from, um, I would say, middle of June and, uh, and end of June, we really started working on demand generation. Because finally, the context is such that the audience's sentiment is, I'm at home. I'm doing everything at home. I don't want to be going out. Do I really need the lifestyle and fashion categories? You know, for most of us, we were uh, only really paying attention you know, I would say shoulder up because that's all that is visible on uh, on a screen when we are doing uh, when we are working from home, and uh, a watch and a wrist is very far down and it doesn't even come to. Um, and you know, watches are things that you actually wear a lot to impress other people, especially in work situations. So, how does one uh, address this challenge? And we found that uh, we had to go back into our uh, kind of treasure trove of meaning for the brand to find out a new trigger and push it up front. Actually, this new trigger is an old trigger. It's something that has been there associated with the brand from the 90s. But it was not something that we uh, you know, deployed very actively recent, uh, in the recent times. But COVID told us that one of the things that is really important to people right now is connecting to loved ones. And gifting is one way of communicating our love. So we established that if I have to get the right trigger, one of the big triggers is an emotional appeal for gifting. And this was something that we built onto the brand and we call this whole campaign idea, Gift a Titan Smile. And the idea is that you could be gifting a Titan Smile. The moment you gift a Titan, you know, the other person will smile. So you could be gifting a Titan Smile to people, your loved ones who are in the same household as you. You could also be gifting it to your loved ones who are in some other city. And right now, you can't even think of, you know, traveling. 
and uh, also a lot of missed milestones you know birthdays anniversaries a lot of jobs uh, lots of things have happened in the last four and a half five months and we haven't really uh, you know said thank you to people that uh, need that we need to say the thank you to so here is one piece of communication where we built gifting uh, among uh, family members <laughs> I just wanted to thank these hands. Jin bar sab ke liye kitna kuch karte. Aise. Khaliya thanks. So many reasons to give someone a smile. Thank you. Bye bye. So this is how we kind of took it across different relationships, uh, reasons to give to your wife for the countless cups of coffee before every meeting, uh, gift to your many reasons to give to your dad for all those dad jokes that kind of made the lockdown a little more bearable, um, reasons to give to your husband for being your BFF. I think we realized many dimensions to our intimate relationships, and I think the most important one was self gifting. gift to yourself for picking up the pain brush again and this was could be one of the many reasons to gift to yourself a titan another um lever another trigger for uh, this category is desire and desire uh, had to be brought back into the forefront before the audiences just got habituated to learn and learn to live with less and desire is always about uh the lure of the product it's always about how differentiated how how unique how drool worthy the product is and we actually had one such product that had been awaiting launch since uh, actually march april and uh, we launched it in august and this is actually a smart watch um, from titan it's called the titan connected x and it's a flagship full touch smartwatch from titan and has done amazingly really well it's priced at 11995 uh it's a great price for a smartwatch but uh, we weren't very sure how it would do because of the situation what we found is that it did really really well and uh, uh i just like to play this little video that talks about the features of this uh, watch presenting the new titan connected x and um these are the triggers which we were trying to put together at a category level now i want to talk a little bit about what we see is happening uh, overall uh, for brands and retailers which is the demand has got so, so substantially reduced and yet we haven't really realized what this really means uh we thought we had thought of this idea sometime in june july and finally we we kind of launched this initiative in august it is not a campaign it is probably an initiative in its best avatar it is a movement it is about actually how do we get india ticking again and india will start ticking again only when each of us who have the ability and the wherewithal to do those small purchases small and big go back and start life all over again what we don't realize is the wheel of the economy is so inextricably linked every cog is enmeshed with the other that our little actions of not consuming things that we used to is leading to 
huge losses of livelihoods, unprecedented and unimaginable unemployment. And no matter what we are expecting from the government and the RBI, etc., I think it's every citizen's responsibility, whoever has the wherewithal to, to start consuming again. So this movement, which is called Let's Get India Ticking, it's a category agnostic uh, uh, campaign. It is not about watches or Titan, though it does have the signature Titan tune, but it is about uh, giving a subtle nudge to consumers all over that consumption is actually in some ways better than charity. Because when you consume, it leads to further production, and that leads to further employment, and then that leads to further consumption. And this is a piece of work that we are very, very um, proud of. We are also very passionate about. It's at that stage where I'm personally writing to CEOs of many companies and leaders and many brands uh, requesting them to take the pledge. And so far, we've had 55 brands taking this pledge. And that's amazing because um, brands coming out and saying, uh, I will support you is just so amazing because somewhere we have opened our minds to saying, I don't need to be all possessive about my brand and my category. And we're all in this together. And together, we have to get India ticking. we buy something, we get India ticking. Let's get India ticking. To join the initiative, log on to the website. I would uh, request all the viewers, if you want to participate in this, you want your company, your brand, and we've got brands across food, the retail, accessories, uh, apparel, um, power, uh, uh, FMCG. Uh, it's just amazing. It's been an outpouring of support and everybody sees what this is about. And uh, we want, um, we have a target ambition of 200 brands who will partner and hopefully there will be enough decibel levels created by this. Uh, that uh, a lot of people who've been holding back on that tiny purchase, on buying the flowers, sending their clothes to the man who irons the clothes, uh, you know, buying the fruits and vegetables, you know, at the at the local level, uh, all of these people, you know, you saw the chai wala and the jalebi wala and the, the raddi wala. Uh, it, this is really an appeal uh, from all of us to uh, let's all get into it and let's get India ticking. So um, this is really what I had in terms of uh, how do you really engage consumers uh, with your brand uh, through digital engagement uh, in these times. Thanks a ton for your patient listening and I'm open to questions. I can, I'm actually going to come out of this presentation and then we can talk about it. Thank you. Thank you, Suparna. That was a wonderful presentation. Our four of questions coming in for you. So I'd like to quickly mention a few of those questions to you. This is a, this is a three part question. 
So let me start by just asking you, seeing the success of these wonderful music campaigns, do you think it is important for brands to consider their sonic identity to engage with the consumers and enhance their digital experience? Obviously, the answer is yes. And um, but my my simple point is that this sonic identity has not been built now. It was yeah. built two, three years back. And, uh, you know, we are only building on the tops of we're on the shoulders of the giants who've come before us. So yeah. both on the brand side and the agency side, people have done so much work. And uh, it is it is a very precious asset. We take it very seriously. We are constantly innovating and building on it. And it was during this time that you re realized what the power of that asset was because it was just instantaneous magic in terms of engaging with consumers. Yeah. Um, so the question following up to that is that should the focus now be on how a brand is being heard over the visual identity? I think both. I think it's about an audiovisual signature. And if you saw a lot of the pieces of communication that I showed, there are some key commonalities. There's always a certain rootedness. There is a warmth. There is a certain class. But it's yeah. not some very status oriented. There is a certain authenticity. There is, it's always emotional, but, and the product is lovely. So it all comes together well. So this yeah. identity is an audiovisual identity. Yes, yeah. there is a separate audio or audio identity, the sonic identity, which is very strong, but it is an overall package that if one, one did not put the name at all of the brand, I think 60, 70% of consumers would know that it is Titan. Right. So another part to the question is, would the brand focus on having music at retail outlets aligned with the brand identity? So we play, um, play, we have playlists for our retail uh, stores. Uh, obviously, you know, it needs to be in the background because people are shopping. It can't be very uh, in your face. And we try and mix it up in terms of genres. It's not that we play only Mozart. I don't think that will work. I think it's something that, and also different stores, you know, we have World of Titan stores where we play a certain kind of music. We have fast track stores where we play a different kind of music. So it's, it really depends on uh, what the need for that music, what, is, what role does that music play in the retail store is different from the role that uh, music plays if it is a, a, a piece of brand communication. Right. Another question we've got is that, uh, I think this is a question that all of us suffer from. Like I am not a person who can go online and shop. I need the touch and feel. So this is a very relevant question on that topic, which says, can digital engagement replace the touch and feel factor? So um, what we are discovering is that there are new hybrid modes which are working very well. Yeah. So uh, we're doing, obviously, earlier, there was a customer who was perfectly comfortable buying online. That person continues to be perfectly comfortable buying online. But there are, like you said, a lot of customers who would uh, do the search and the buying offline. You go to a store. In fact, you go to lots of stores. You check out, you know, sometimes buying a nice watch for a birthday or something. You uh, you go this weekend also. You go next weekend also. Then you do a little search online. Now what we are seeing is that we are trying to aid the customer to do the search process online because that's what people are uh, really uh, keen on. So whether, you know, we have live chat on our website or we do uh, appointment booking or we do video assisted shopping. So uh, the, uh, the customer actually calls in and the video, the, the store staff uh, engage with the customer on video and show them that, you know, this watch will look like this. So as opposed to, because the customer doesn't want to necessarily touch a lot of watches and apart from that you know the safety things that we anyway talked about now we are doing uv sanitization of watches once one customer has tried it on we uv sanitize it before putting it out so it is a very interesting hybrid that is coming up and um, that's actually something that i think will stay because yes at some point some vaccine will come we will all go back but some things become habits and then you find them convenient so why do you want to go back right 
right and if things are getting better then why not i think people will save up on a lot of shopping time also by doing this yeah. online yeah. absolutely so with that uh, suparna thank you so much there are many questions coming in but with the paucity of time i have to thank you here but do join us on our online conversation using the hashtag tech munch this is for all our viewers also please send in your questions uh, using the hashtag if Suparna can come online and uh, answer some of those there as well. Thank you so much for your time and this wonderful, insightful presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kyati, and thanks to Exchange for Media. It was wonderful to be in eTech Bunch. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone.